This is Starship as we know it. You think humans will fly on this? No, human Starship will be a completely different beast. Let's explore why. Hello everybody and welcome. Just a little while ago Starship SN20 roared to life during its static fire test and we are all waiting for SpaceX to launch the first orbital flight test of the mightiest spacecraft ever built. But if we look into Starship's future, we know there will be multiple new variants of the vehicle. So far we know that there will be a cargo version, a tanker variant, a lunar lander version that actually won the bid for NASA's Human Lander System contract, HLS for short, and then there is going to be another. The human rated Starship, which technically the lunar version is, but not completely. And this is where the opinions about the future of Starship start to diverge. So let's dive into that. Before that, I hate doing this, but you know the drill. Please hit the like button and leave a comment after you have watched the video, because that's the only way YouTube notices my videos and can recommend it to like minded space enthusiasts. It's much appreciated. When talking about a human rated starship, it might be best to use HLS as our starting point. The lander is part of the Artemis program, which itself has the goal to send humans back to the moon for the first time in 50 years. You see, the current plan, as outlined by NASA, sees astronauts flying to the yet to be built Lunar Gateway space station on the Orion capsule launched by the SLS rocket. There they will transfer to the SpaceX Lunar Starship to land on the moon's surface and return back to the gateway, from which they will then travel back to Earth in Orion. Immediately after that plan became public, a lot of people were asking, why won't NASA send astronauts to the moon directly on Starship? At first glance, relying on Orion and Starship appears redundant and unnecessary. Also, an argument could be made that this was only planned like it is to ensure SLS will be flown for the crewed Artemis missions, since SLS is basically a jobs program for US senators that approve NASA's budget. However, Artemis has a very ambitious timeline. Boots back on the moon in 2024. That is three years from recording of this video. And then there is another more important factor. NASA is obsessed with safety. And rightly so. Any astronaut fatality is a PR nightmare and can also have an adverse effect on funding for ongoing projects. Apollo 1, Challenger, Columbia. Each of these was a heavy setback for the US space agency. So for NASA to be willing to put humans on any vehicle, it has to provide redundancies and safety nets that have been subjected to rigorous testing. While it is very much delayed and over budget, Orion has already been tested for re-entering the atmosphere from a very high orbit during the Exploration Flight Test 1 mission in 2014. And Orion's launch escape system was also put through its paces. Starship's progress has been incredible so far, but as of now, it has yet to prove that it is safe for humans to launch to and return from space. So what would it take for SpaceX to ease NASA's concerns and bring a human-rated Starship to reality? <laughs> I know, some of you familiar with this topic are already typing away a comment that reads something like, Everyday Astronaut already did a video on this, to which I say, Yes, but no. In his usual manner, Tim did an excellent deep dive into abort systems and focused on the phase from launch through ascent until orbit. You really should go and watch it. But Starship is also designed to come back to Earth and land, preferably in one piece. And I believe that this part of the journey involves also a lot of risk, maybe even more than getting up there. Therefore, if NASA would require SpaceX to integrate some form of safety system for the crew, it has to be something that can function during descent as well. 
Let me explain why I want to focus on the descent part. A lot of time people compare spaceflight to the early days of air travel. The thinking is that if we fly a lot more rockets than we do today, that they could reach the same reliability as airplanes and in the end could forgo the need for additional safety systems. No commercial airliner has ejection seats and parachutes for their passengers, right? Yeah, that's true. But we're starting to get into apples and oranges territory here. Every passenger plane has a safety system built in that does not require any additional parts. Do you know what it is? Wings. Any Airbus, Boeing, McDonnell Douglas or Tupolev or whatever you want to call it can still be controlled and glide to a hopefully safe emergency landing in case the propulsion system fails. One of the most iconic instances was US Airways Flight 1549, which lost all engine power on January 15, 2009 due to a flock of birds. Unable to reach an airport, it landed in the Hudson River. Everybody on board survived. Now let's take Starship. While it surely would roast any bird stupid enough to fly too close to its rocket engine exhaust, loss of propulsion during descent and landing means you're dead. Period. Those control surfaces are excellent for keeping the vehicle level during that iconic belly flop maneuver. But they're like those stubby little T-Rex arms compared to an airliner's wings. There's something called a glide ratio where sailplanes would be right on top, then there would be commercial planes, then jet fighters, and somewhere long after that we would have Starship. You may have noticed I have not mentioned helicopters. While it is true that they do not have wings, they can still use something called autorotation to perform an emergency landing in case of an engine failure. There is an excellent video on this by Smarter Every Day from a few years ago. Again, an already necessary part of the vehicle in combination with aerodynamics provides the safety net required to prevent loss of life in case of propulsion failure. So, what kind of safety systems could SpaceX integrate for NASA to be willing to launch a crew on Starship and have them land in it as well? If you know me, you will already expect the next part. I whipped up a few prototypes in Kerbal Space Program to illustrate potential ideas. One version was this. Good old parachutes! After a successful re-entry and bleeding off velocity through the upper atmosphere, a set of parachutes could slow the vehicle down enough for it to splash down safely. For this to work though, Starship would have to have an emergency that does not cause any structural damage like a tank rupture. However, there is another problem. The current landing profile requires Starship to fall until it is just a few hundred meters above ground, traveling at around 90 meters per second. Only then are the engines supposed to reignite. If there is a problem with the propulsion system, this would probably be much too late for a parachute system to work. NASA's currently preferred mode of ferrying astronauts to orbit, SpaceX's Crew Dragon, opens its drogue chutes at almost 5,500 meters above the sea, traveling at 160 meters per second. The main parachutes open at 1,800 meters after the capsule has slowed down to around 50 meters per second. That's a lot higher and a lot slower than what Starship will experience during its landing profile. Next, I tried a variant where I separated the crew into multiple compartments so I could jettison them in case of an emergency. Well, at least that was the theory. Again.
Morgen. If engineers more diligent than tiny green little space frogs were to work on this for real, I am sure they could make it less deadly than what I created in Kerbal Space Program. However, there are a few general issues with this approach as well. While we could rescue 24 crew members this way, there would have to be a lot of systems involved that have to work in unison for this not to kill every last person on board. Or at least more than half. Because during the skydiving phase of Starship's landing, half of those capsules would point to the ground. But I guess even one survivor is better than zero? No. Bad plan. Forget it. Should a human-rated Starship ever have an escape system to rescue crew in case of an emergency, it will probably be something like this a detachable crew compartment on the leeward side of the vehicle. Basically, it's an ejection seat scaled up for 16 crew members in this variant. This could work during ascent as well as descent and would only add one more system to Starship and not 12. I am sure some of you think that 16 crew members is not enough, since SpaceX founder Elon Musk said something along the lines of 100 people on Starship. But so far the vehicle that sent the most people into space at once was Space Shuttle Challenger during the STS-61A mission in 1985. Eight crew members were on board that time. So even just 16 would immediately double the old record. Yes, there may be Starship variants for 100 people for trips around the moon or for interplanetary travel. However, I do not believe that either SpaceX or NASA would want to put that many people at risk for the critical phases of launch, re-entry and landing. A more likely scenario is sending up a handful of people with each launch to another Starship parked in orbit and use that to ferry them to their destination. Remember, Starship was designed to be a system, not a single vehicle. What we have seen until now is just the beginning. We might even see an entire fleet of Starships flying to Mars, as Marcus House showed in his video The Mars Shot. So what do you think? Will SpaceX make Starship reliable enough that NASA could do without any escape system during launch, ascent and landing? Or do you believe like me, that the agency will demand some form of safety measure. What version of Starship do you think we will see in the future? Which one of these versions are you looking forward to the most? Tell me in the comments below or join me on my Discord server, where we have a nice little community of space enthusiasts and Kerbal Space Program fans. Let's have a healthy discussion about the future. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.